This is the electric outdoor water filter from the company Fit and Hot. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this unique to me at least product, keep watching. All right, before we get started, I just want to thank the company Fit and Hot. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly, Fit and Hot, for sending me this water filter so that I can share it with you. The quick backstory is they offered it. I didn't ask it. I didn't even know this type of a product existed. I didn't know if I knew it was existed, if I would have even asked for one. Now that I have it, well, I'll give you my experiences with it and let you decide for yourself. So the other thing is, Fit and Hot is the company that sent me this compact steel uh, wood stove, camp, uh, hot tent stove, some time ago. And if you watched, I did a review of that back in the winter time. Um, budget, to say the least, missing a lot of refinements and key features, functional and certainly something you can work with to make it better if you want. Well, Fit and Hot actually responded by saying, thank you very much for all of those criticisms. They were actually gonna use them to improve the product. So that's one of the things I'll say right up front. I like that this company is willing to listen to people who test these things out and actually use them. Same thing goes with this. I've been giving them feedback on this product. Okay, now let's bring the camera in. I'll give you some close-ups of the unit. I'll go over its key features as well as its specifications, but I know what you wanna really see is it in operation. So let's do that now. All right, I, I know I have it out of its case, and I'll be giving you some close-ups of it in a minute because, yeah, it's a couple of devices with a series of hoses, but I thought probably we should get the case and what comes with it out of the way first, and then we can get on to describing the device. So it comes with a nice hard shell case, not super hard, but you know, just a hard shell case. And by the way, it is rechargeable. It is USB Type-C rechargeable, so there's the cable provided, and as well, of course, as you expect, the operation manual with warranty information. So everything does fit in there, trust me. It's just, you have to coil all those tubings up to get it inside again. So let me just put that out of the way. Bring this back into the picture so we can go through some of the key features. All right, so I didn't understand this right away, how this worked and why it would be as effective as it is. Um, but I do now, so I can actually give you my thoughts on it. There is a number of different things going on here. Not, look at that, deer flies. I told you I had problems with deer flies here in the summer. Um, there's a number of things going on here. And one of this fact is that there's actually two filters, two hollow fiber core filters in this. One is in the pre-filter, and actually there's a pre-pre-filter we'll talk about on the end of the hose in a minute. This pre-filter, and then there's another one inside, and I can take you that, uh, take that out and show it to you as well. Each of these filters are rated for removing 99.99% of all uh, cysts like cryptosporidium and giardia and bacteria. So one of them is. You put two of them in line, and you've re-upped the log rhythm up quite considerably. I don't know what it was, but I don't give a rating for that. You can use them together as they're designed to be, or you can take them apart, like remove the one on the forward end of it if you find that it's slowing down filtration and you just want to move it faster because you're not really all that suspect about the water. You just want to put it through to be sure. Then you can remove one of them and be assured that the one inside the unit is actually doing the job of removing 99.99%. Yes, individually filters can be rated to do much more, but when you put two of them, Man, you know, that's kind of a unique concept. I knew it was possible. I just hadn't seen anybody do it before. All right, so what else do you get here? So as I mentioned, you do get this pre-filter. I'll open it up in a minute and show you what it's all about inside. You do get this filter. This reminds me of an irrigation stone that you would get for an aquarium set. And this is what they call the sand filter. So this is the first stage and it's very effective. A lot of them are, are material, like, I don't know, very fine foam that's designed to keep out all the sand and silt. This on the other and keeps everything out. Um, but you have to think, won't it get clogged over time? Well, the potential is there, but there's an answer to that as well. There's the float for keeping it for off of the bottom of whatever water source you're in. I will say, I think the float could be better. I might actually find another piece of foam to hold it up a little higher in the water because what I found is, and, and hopefully you'll be able to see this in the water when I go to demonstrate it, when the suction begins and the water starts to fill up the stone and the tube, it actually starts to sink a little further. It's not floating on the surface any further. All right, let's work our way up to, if I can get this apart, here we go. Come on, get out. Are you gonna come out? 
Now it's impacted in there kind of tightly. Can you see it inside? That's, that's a typical hollow core filter that most of today's uh, filters are, are used in terms like the Sawyer and those ones. They, they all use this type of a fiber setup and it works extremely well o-ring around the attachment here. You can remove it and you can replace it if you think over time that it's uh, gotten clogged up and you can back flush this. Really, oh, I'll get to that feature. I just don't want to get ahead of myself. Yep, says in, says out. So if you did take the tubing off of it and you wanted to reassemble it correctly, you could do so. Oh, by the way, you can use just this. So take the tubing off of the electronic device and you've got a filter all by itself so that you can draw on it like a straw possibly hook it up in line with some type of a collection bag and then run the water down through the filter in this direction. But we'll talk more about that in a minute. All right, let's work our way up to the main unit itself. Okay, so uh, what have we got here? We have a Opry electronic pump, right? So there's an electronic pump. The switches are power and light right up here. So power and light because there's a small LED thing. I wondered, you know, is that even you know, make any sense at all. Then it occurred to me, yeah, you could actually be filtering your water at dark, not necessarily streamside, but maybe you have a bucket of water or you collected up some water somehow that you want to uh, filter maybe at your picnic table or at your bench or wherever you're sitting and you want a little bit of light to work with, sure. So there's power and light. Then there's pump and the pump button itself has a slow function so you can actually slow it down, which, yeah, I think it's not a bad idea depending on how turbid or how cloudy or how much things are floating around your water you may want to do that just below that there are two ports first off is this one the usb type c charging port and uh, of course for recharging and a usb type a so it acts as a power bank as well so you can use this to recharge your other devices with so also just a nice little extra i mean it doesn't cost them really think anything extra to put that in the device so why not and then you have it there just in case all right let me see if i can show you this filter instead maybe this one will come out for me and by the way it's a good idea ah just a little bit of water from my last use that's not good you really should take it out and let it dry here we go See, another filter. Is this one going to come out? No, it's tight down inside there, probably because it is still wet. But inside here, there's a carbon filter and another, uh, I forget what they call the name of the filter, but another filter that will take even more of the suspended material out. So altogether, you get a six-stage filter system. This is the primary filter, although by the time anything gets to this filter, it's already gone through that pre-filter, removing so much of the, uh, the other two filters, I guess, if you include the sand filter. Now, let me just put this back together. All right, okay. So, there is the unit assembled. All right, let's talk about the obvious. Where's the battery, Mark? It's built in. It's non-replaceable, and uh, it is a comment that I passed on to Fit and Hot that really you should be able to take the battery out somehow so that you can replace the battery if for whatever reason the battery dies and you can't get it to charge again. So they are aware of that. Now, it's a manufacturing cost thing, but you know, I know most people will like access to their battery. I know I do. All right, so we've gone through the basic key features of this. Oh, there is one more thing, and this is nothing short of amazing. You can reverse the tubing. So if you take the tubing, remember this is the input, this is the one that's going into the water, and this is the hose that you're using to fill up your water bottle or pot or whatever it is you're going to use. If you take those and reverse them and then dunk this into some clean water, not all your clean water, remember it just came out of dirty water, then you can electronically back flush the device. How cool is that, right? No more syringes or trying to squeeze a bottle or, or a bag of some type to back flush through your, your filter. This will do it for you automatically. All you have to do is reverse the tubing on it and you can do that. However, having said that, this is another comment I passed on to Fit and Hot. Be a lot nicer if there was some easy way to remove this instead of trying to, well, you can see there's the attachment point on the end of it. I think you can see that, can't you? Hopefully you can see that right there. It's just a little nipple type of attachment. 
and they haven't fallen off on me yet and I haven't lost them and it hasn't been that big a deal but I just thought it would be a lot easier if there was some way of just a click type of an attachment some like the universal ones you get on bladder systems but obviously a lot smaller It'd be nice if they could design something to work like that and uh, yeah, okay. So it, that's a great feature. It just needs a little bit more work to make it an even better feature. All right, let's go through the specifications for this. So dimensions in the case. Where did I put the case? Now, the reason I'm giving you the dimensions in the case is because it makes sense to carry it in this. Not necessarily in this. I suppose you could wrap it all up and drop it in a bag, but it came from this, and this is great at protecting it and keeping it from getting any damage. It does add a little bit of weight. Oh, you're probably not carrying this because you're an ultralight hiker. You're carrying this because you have a need for water and you like the convenience and ease at which it works. Maybe like a bushcrafter, right? So someone who doesn't necessarily go long distances and is worried about every gram, but wants performance and wants to just make life easier when they get to their destination. That's where this thing kind of fits in. So you may as well carry it in this case. So this case is eight inches by 4.5 by 2.5. And I'll put the metric in the video description just to speed things along here. Total weight, everything, all in that I have in my hands right now. One pound, 2.8 ounces. As I mentioned, there's an 18650 battery inside of this. It's a 2600 milliamp lithium-ion battery, but it is non-replaceable. Whether you're listening fit and hot, watch the comments. I know people are going to say something about that. And the filter size, and like I said, two filters that are 0 0.01 micron hollow fiber filters. Yeah, it's, you know, those are what really impressed me. The fact that there's not one high quality filter, but two high quality filters doing that much more work. Okay. Now, as far as the performance goes, I already mentioned the log logarithmics for uh, bacteria. It also will remove a five log or 99.999, is that five? Yeah, 99.999 percent of chlorine, heavy metals, chemical pollutants, sediments, and other particles. Now that's 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 pretty you know impressive, especially heavy metals and chemical pollutants, and um, I say that because uh, I've had viewers comment in other videos that you know where they go out to play in the woods, they're near agricultural centers or industrial centers, and they wouldn't dare drink the water. I'm not even sure I'd trust it after running through any filter out there, but this says. Well, at least it is uh, tested to remove 99.99 percent of all of those things. That's pretty impressive, and remember two filters, not one. It's only the second filter that has the carbon, the one inside the main unit that has the carbon element as well. Flow rate on slow, 18.6 ounces per minute. You know, it's not really all that big a deal. It's not like you're pumping or waiting up for a gravity system. You're just sitting at the side of the lake, or unless you brought a big bag of water up from the lake uh, or your stream, and you're just waiting for it to fill your bottle up. But you can turn it up to high and get up to 23 ounces per minute. The battery life is rated at six hours. You know, I haven't recharged this. I wonder if I can, well, once we turn it on, there's four little LED lights right underneath the uh, LED light. So four little battery status lights. Let me just turn it on now and see if it... Press and hold. There, okay. Let's see if that's showing up. Can you see that? I've been using this probably half a dozen times out here, maybe even 10 times out here, and I haven't recharged the battery. So it's now, okay, yes, I've only filled bottles up like once or twice each trip out, so that, you know, maximum two liters each time. So if we say twice, two liters, six times, you know, that's only 12 liters. It's not like I've used this a whole lot but it hasn't taken the battery down at least, not at all. You know, you can see it's still showing 100% or between 75 and 100%. That's what those LED lights would represent. All right, let's just turn that off, hold, and then it goes out and you're off again. So you can't, you know, you have to press and hold. So that's great in terms of you don't turn it on accidentally in your pack. However, if it's inside the case, it's not much of a chance of that happening anyway, is there? Uh, anything else to say about this? Now, here is something I asked about from Fit and Hot. What about impact rating? You know, if I drop this on the rocks at the lake, will it withstand a one meter fall? Kind of the standard we expect from a lot of our electronic devices. Or what if I drop it directly in the water accidentally? You know, will it be waterproof to a given uh, IP intrusion protection like uh, IP68 or something, which is the highest you can do? A lot of flashlights are rated that way. And they say they have not tested it because there is a cost to testing, but that is something that is in their plans to do. So at some point in the future, you may see it with an impact resistance testing uh, as, uh, 
statement with, that go with it, as well as a waterproof or intrusion protection statement. But so far, it does not have it. So what has been my experience? Well, I haven't dropped it in the water, and I haven't dropped it from any height, but I have gotten it wet. Sitting next to the lake, it's hard not to. Um, so uh, it's, you know, at least splash resistant. There's really not a lot of places where water's going to get into where the electronics are. About the only places are these two ports here, and they have pretty good seals on them. So as long as they're closed, you know, at least splashes are going to prevent water from getting in. All right, I think I have given you all the technical specs as well as all the key features for this. What I know you really want to watch is see it in action. All right, so I'm sitting on the edge of the lake. It was a little challenging trying to find a spot where I could set the camera and be close to the water without, ouch, something just bit me. Deer flies, man. I got to kill one so far, so that's one for them, one for me, I guess. Anyway, I'm sitting on the edge of the lake. I'm enjoying the sun. It's a great spot to be, but it's a little hard to set up for recording. Ouch. More. Let's see if I can get this done before I get bit to death. Oh, by the way, what I'm going to be filling up is some, another product that I'm testing. It's called the Swig Rig from Hardside Hydration. And this is a 1.5 liter uh, now Jean bottle that they sent along. But the magic is all in the top part where it connects with a universal connector and allows you to set it up like you would a bladder in your backpack, but it's a water bottle. Stay tuned for that review. So far, actually this is the first time out in the woods with it. So far it's working out really well. But now it is time to fill it up with some water. So I'll set that down between my legs there. And I will set the forward part, the sand filter plus pre-filter into the water. Now the water here is only about oh, eight inches deep. Uh, yeah, it's probably not going to show up in the video. It's floating right now. Both the pre-filter and the sand filter are floating on the surface of the water. But it won't for very long. I'm just hoping it doesn't stir up too much sediment in the bottom. Power button on. And pump. And that's all I have to do. I don't know. Is that showing up? Hearing? Can you hear that? Pump is running. I'm starting to get water already. Yeah, okay. And that's all there is to it. I've already got about three, four ounces of water in here, but it's going to take quite a bit more to fill this bottle. Actually, I'm not going to fill it completely. It's just extra weight I don't need to carry because I have sources of water all along my trail here. But I'll let it run for a minute. As it fills the bottle. Uh, Almost two inches of water in the bottle already, so that's pretty quick when you think about it. And I'm pleased to see that the sand filter and pre-filter have not sunk down into the sediment at the bottom uh, that has in the past, but it seems to be working out better right now. Nothing's being stirred up, so really I'm not having to worry about a lot clogging the, the filter up. I will show you the reverse uh, flush out in a few minutes time when I get back up out of the sun here and how I'm going to do that is by um, putting a little bit of the water that I've got in this Nalgene into a cup or actually probably into my kettle and just run it in reverse. Oh a little tiny fish swimming by. Hello little fish. Better be faster than that. Big fish is going to come get you. Looks like a little tiny smolt but it must be a trout. It's not a salmon. Not in this lake anyway. Okay, I think that, oh geez, I'm almost half full. That's uh, all I need to do for the demonstration. Now I'll stop, I'll set back up on my bench up in the woods here and show you how it works to flush. All right, I'm back up in the woods, just away from the lake a little bit here under the shade of the trees. Beautiful here today, by the way, if I haven't already said that. And I'm going to back flush this unit to clean out any of that dirty water. So what I have is I have, I took some of the water from that water bottle and just put in my little kettle here. Not a whole lot, probably about a cup and a half, something like that. I won't even need all of that to back flush it. But uh, so I have a clean water source. I use my kettle because that's not a bad thing. If I contaminate it by dropping this into the water, well, I'll dump it out or I'll put it on over some heat and uh, I'll pasteurize it that way. So either way, it'll work fine. All right, so the trick is very simple. This is the water hose that comes out, feeding the clean water out. And this is what I meant about, wouldn't it be nice if this was 
an easy disconnect. All right, so this is the dirty water hose. It's going to be the reverse of this. How do I do That's right. Okay. And now I'm going to take my clean water hose. Now it remains clean, remember, because I'm putting it into a clean source of water. So this was the output hose that I used to fill the water bottle up. That is now going to go into my kettle. This is the dirty water hose that is now connected to the output port on the device. I'll actually show you it flushing in a second. I'm just trying to juggle everything all at the same time here. Let's turn the power on. Hold a little longer. There we go. All right. Couldn't see what I was doing in the light here. Okay, so the, the, it is on. This is the, again, <laughs> the dirty hose. I might as well pass comment on this right now. Do you see the stone? I think I showed it to you a minute ago. Um, it's like a filtration or a, an aeration stone that you would have for a uh, an aquarium. I was questioning whether or not it was a good choice. Well, let's just see what happens when I turn the pump on. Oop. Put the other end into the water. It's flushing. It's flushing all the dirt out. So it's now flushing the, both of the filters, the primary filter in the electronics unit, as well as the pre-filter and the stone. So it's getting plenty of a flushing to clean out anything that was left behind. All right, but that's not the end of it, all right? Let's just turn this device off first. All right, turn the light off, the power off to the device. Very good, okay. Don't do what I did in the opening of this video. Leave everything installed. That's just me being a little bit lazy or forgetful the last time I used it. Do take this apart when you get it home and you've flushed it, or if you're going to be at a site for a couple of days, do take it apart and allow those hollow core filters to dry out so that just in case there was anything left inside of the filters, it doesn't get a chance to grow in that moist environment. But uh, yeah, that's just the last step to maintaining this thing. And then you're ready to pack it away for your next trip. Hi folks, I have some additional information for you. Shortly after making this video, the company Fit and Hot reached out to me to let me know they were sending an updated version of the pump. So what this is what I received. So everything is the same in terms of the pump itself. All the specs and everything else is the same. The carrying case is different now. Instead of a hard sided case, you get a drawstring bag with a couple mesh uh, pockets on the sides to put the hoses and the like. But here is where the major difference lies. So, on the other filter, the one in this video, it shows a hose coming out of this with a stone pre filter or sand filter. So, fit and hot has decided to eliminate that in favor of going directly with this filter in the water. It still has the float on it. Now, here's what I want to show you about the filter. They actually provide two of them. And the reason they've done so, well, I'll start with the reason why they replaced the other filter is according to their more extensive testing, the little stone filter slows the uh, pass-through rate of water significantly. And they felt that it would be better off without the stone. So they've gone just with this filter and because they recognize now that there is no sand or mud filter that this could get clogged so let me just show you the inside end of this so you can see what i'm saying there is the hollow core fiber material that is going to filter out all of the bacteria and protozoas and it's exposed to the mud and what i mean by that is you can see that this is the only thing screening the mud and sand now so i did re uh, send an email back to them to let them know that they really should put some type of a uh, fibrous material in here just to keep the sand and mud from clogging up the main part of the filter something that is replaceable and it would extend the life of these filters they said they would take that into consideration but in the short term here's what i've come up with for myself so these are the the 3m scotch bright type of scrubby pads that you can pick up at most stores i got these at the dollar store i cut out a couple of circles out of the material and here is one here this is just a small circle of this material right here and i'll show you how i'm using this now you cut it to size some of them are a little thick you may have to press them down you put it inside 
as you can see. Then you can put it back on and you're good to go. All right, now let's get back to the video. All right, let's wrap this video with a few closing thoughts for the Fit and Hot electronic pump filter. All right, got it right that time. Um, overall, the concept is really, really interesting. I know that people are gonna say, and I'll say this myself, it's an electronic device, Mark. Are you really gonna trust your filtration to something that runs off of a battery? What happened if the battery died and you don't have a means of recharging it? I agree, no argument from me at all. That's why I like the fact that you can now take it apart and use it without the electronic pump. You still have either one or two, depending on how you wanna hook them up in a line, two filters, both capable of removing 99.999% of all bacterial and uh, cysts like cryptosporidium. Uh, you know, it's a backup, right? It's the convenience of having something that you don't have to do a lot of pumping with, don't have to load a bag up and use for a gravity filter. Not that there's anything wrong with that. This is just about convenience with this. This will do all of that work while you sit back and do something else if you want to walk away from it, I guess, and let it work. Or just sit and, like I did, look around the lake and see little fish swimming in the water at your feet. I think it's a really good device that way backed up by the fact that if the battery dies, you have a means of using it without the battery being the limiting factor. Uh, cons on this thing, a couple, as I mentioned, it's a non-replaceable 18650 battery. I really wish they had it so that I could access the battery and hopefully they'll listen and do that for a future generation. It may add a little bit of cost, but I think if they produce enough of them, the cost comes down anyway. The other thing is the ability to quick connect the hoses one end to the other for back flush. And I think that would be a real nice plus. So neither of these are deal breakers. They're just something you have to consider if you're thinking about purchasing this. And the last thing, as I already mentioned, it doesn't have a waterproof rating or an impact rating. Both things I'd like to see on this device, well, seeing where I was sitting, I was sitting on rocks. If I drop it, I want to know I'm not going to destroy the thing. If it dunks into the water, even though the water was shallow, I want to know it's not going to destroy the thing. So hopefully they'll come in future devices as well. Okay. That's all I can give you for this device. I have been using it for some time now. As I mentioned, uh, it's working for me. It does have a full one-year warranty if anything goes wrong with it. So that's nice coverage to have. I'll put all the information I have, including the specifications and the performance and all that type of thing, as well as the links to where you can get a better look at this if you're cons considering it might be something for you. If you have any comments or questions, put them in the comment section below. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less travel because you know it'll make all the difference. Bye for now.